then Pedro, if you are ready, let's let's start this webinar. Let's go. Let's start this one. Very good. Okay, thank you all for joining us in today's webinar. Okay, Xavi, uh, thank you, but I believe I believe that is a problem with the sound. So let's let's start with this with this webinar. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, to for joining this webinar. Um, the idea uh, for this webinar series is to uh, modeling real real jewelry uh, uh, pieces. So. We are going to start with with this one uh, with this butterfly. Of course, uh, as you know, in these webinars, you can ask using the the chat. So the idea would be to to let us know, as you can see, if you are a, a expert, a beginner. So uh, it would be helpful for us to understand what level are you at the moment in order to 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 organize everything so i believe shavi can can arrange his sound let's see if he can join us i'm going to sit here next to you hope everybody can hear me correctly hello everybody this is xavier hope the problem is fixed uh, we are going to start the the webinar so let's go Uh, of course, you most of you know already Pedro Lobrido. He's the our um, CAD manager. He's the one who is uh, always designing in Rhino Gold. He will be the presenter, and I will be in the in the chat for any technical question. As always, uh, let me give a quick introduction about 3DM Solutions. We are a company based in Barcelona. Uh, we mainly develop Rhino plugins such as Clayu, Rhino NS, Rhino Boss. And of course, Clayu, also Skinny 3D, not just for Rhino but other platforms. Today we are we are pretty happy about our job, and we are over uh, 35 countries uh, with a very big uh, global uh, dealer network with uh, 75 resellers. From those who are joining us today for the very first time, uh, we are Rhino Wall. We are. Uh, a jewelry CAD software. Uh, today we are in the version 5, recently launched two weeks ago. And uh, right now all has become the most complete CAD solution for jewelry. And as always, today we are going to show you why we think so. And this is today's exercise. This is a butterfly, we just call it Let It Fly. In, C in this, w in this uh, model, we're going to teach, we're going to show how to use Clayu, this uh, freeform tool included in Rhino Gold. It's uh, using a subdivision technology. After Clayu, we're going to use the automatic pave. As you can see, we use Clayu, this freeform technology, but after that, we use the, the automatic pave tool inside Rhino Gold, meaning that uh, the integration between uh, technologies is, is fluent and, and it works correctly. Of course, later we will use the cutters and boolean operation to make the, the model ready. And finally, we're going to export in STL to, to have it uh, ready for printing and we will create the photorealistic image using the render studio for Arion, also new in this Rhino Gold 5. The idea is to be modeling on about 25 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe less. And uh, as soon as you have questions, maybe we can dedicate the last 5, 10 minutes in answering punctual questions that you have um, seen during the modeling process and uh, dedicate more time in your, in your questions. So uh, I will give the, 
the voice uh, to Pedro, he will be today's presenter. Thank you very much and hope you like the butterfly model. Thank you, thank you very much, Xavi. Okay, so it's time to show Rhino Gold in action. Let me open Rhino Gold interface. And uh, the idea for this for this webinar is to uh, start from zero. So I have a, a new file, and uh, I'm going to start this butterfly uh, based on an image. So the idea is to show that you can use any image. In this case, I'm going to use an image I have in here. Uh, I have downloaded this image from from Google, so it's just imported into Rhino Gold and then define the image size. So as you can see easily, I define the first point and the second point to define the image in my document. Uh, as you can see, the idea uh, is uh, you can use any image. It can be a sketch, it can be a, 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 a an image from from internet anything and it is very helpful to start modeling to start the modeling process in this case we are going to use clayu so after import this image uh, i'm going to to the transform tab and i select the image and i define uh, the option go to center so in this case i will have the the image uh, in the center and now uh, in order to uh, be easier to in the in the modeling process, I'm going to define the image a little bit uh, with with the transparency. So I just need to go to to properties and under the object, I have the option to define the the transparency. So as you can see now, I can see through the image a little bit. I can control the the percentage I need. So uh, now I can see, as you can see, I can I can see the grid a little bit. So this is the idea, just to define a little a little bit the the the, the transparency and also, of course, important is the size. So we should uh, use the the image in the size we want the model. So as you can see, in this case, I have, uh, as you know, each square is one millimeter. So in here I have five, ten, five, ten. And uh, one more in here, so let's say we have around uh, 20, uh, 25 centimeters. I want a little bit bigger, so I will use the gumball to scale the image a little bit, so like this. And now I have the size I want. I'm just going to move down a little bit just to use Clayu in the C plan. And now, in order to uh, to be to be easier and faster in the selection process, what I'm going to do to this image is to lock the image. So I'm going to the with the mouse over this area, and I have the lock objects icon. So I lock the image, and now when I click, I can select the image. So this is just to the next steps to be easier to 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 make my model. Okay, so now I'm going to the top view, and from here I'm going to start with Clayu. I'm going to turn on Clayu. As you can see, when I turn on Clayu, I have the the, the viewport toolbar from Clayu in here. We will use almost all the tools, so I will explain uh, everything. And in this case, I'm going to start uh, with with the uh, with the plan, so I just select my my surface. Let me change display mode to shaded to see to be easier to see what I am doing. And the idea is to define in this case the number. As you can see, I have the parameters in the side panel to define the number of divisions. So I'm going to start with uh, uh, just one division for each side, as you can see, and now. The size I'm going to define as well one millimeter for both sides. So one millimeter, and I have my square. Okay. After this, as you can see, Clayu always 
show the, the, the models as smooth. So it will be, it will be rounded always, but I have the option, as you can see in here, this number two, uh, is the smooth level. So I would recommend we, 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 the minimum is, is one, uh, in this case zero, or the maximum is five. So I recommend to start with one or two in, in the modeling process, and then we, when we go to the manufacturing, we can go to level four or five to have more more detail, the maximum detail. Okay, but I can also click in here, and as you can see, I change from smooth display mode to to the box square display mode. As you can see, it's really easy. And from here, I'm going to select my object, and automatically I have the clay gumball. As you can see, it's enabled in the viewport toolbar. And I can move in one direction, other direction, or if I use the, the disk, I can move in both directions. So I can move freely my, my surface. And this is the idea. I'm going to start with, with this is just a, a, a single surface from, from Clayu. And I'm going to start modeling this butterfly with this, with this uh, surface. So, the idea now is to use the gumballs. I can move, I can rotate, and I can scale everything for Clayu object. So I'm going to change to rotate gumball, and from here I start adjusting my my shape. So in this case, I rotate a little bit. I'm going to scale gumball, and it's exactly the same. I'm going to scale a little bit. And from here, with the move gumball, I'm going to start the modeling process. So, as you know, uh, we have, we can select objects, the entire object, by faces, by edges, or by points. I'm going to use the edges uh, uh, option, and I'm going to start adjusting my shape. And now, I select this one, and I will use the extrude. Let me just go to the perspective view, so you can see what I have at this moment, change the display mode. I only have a square. No, I don't have any thickness in here, just a, 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 a very, very simple square. And from here, I'm going back to the top view. I select the edge so easily from here. I'm going to use the extrude tool in the Clayo tab. So the idea is very easy. I select the edge, I select the extrude tool, and I'm going to define with the disk the extrusion distance. So I'm going to move to move this this edge and use the extrude to follow the image I have in the in the background. So the idea is to keep using the extrude. Every time I use the extrude, I create a new division. Of course, I can adjust. In this case, I rotate a little bit my edge. I can scale a little bit. And once again, extrude and move gumball to define the distance. So remember, uh, as any, any tool, we don't need to click every time in here. If we are going to repeat the tool, we can use the enter and it will call the last tool use it. So in this case, the extrude, every time I press enter, it will start uh, creating the, the, the extrusions. So this is a process. Uh, I think this is a very good exercise because we are going to repeat this process several times. So it's very good for, for practice, this, this Clayu workflow. And now I'm going to keep extruding my my edge uh, using the image as reference. So once again, I'm going to adjust a little bit the edge, going back to the move gumball, and extrude again. Using the disks, I'm going to, to, it's very easy to define the direction and the distance, and X rotate a little bit, extrude again. So this is the process, very easy, following the, the, the image. In this case, I'm going to adjust. The, it's very good if we have the, the edge uh, 
perpendicular to, to the to the direction we want to go. It's easier. So once again, extrude, and here we go. Rotate a little bit the edge, move gumball, and extrude. In this case, I need to rotate a little bit more, so rotate gumball. If needed, I can also use the scale. And go back to the move gumball, press enter, and here we go again. This is the idea. Um, let me just show you, we are seeing all these sharp corners, but when I go back to the smooth uh, display mode, as you can see, everything will be smooth. And of course, I will be able to adjust all the, the points, everything we will see. Uh, it's very, very easy. So from here, I need to adjust this edge. Remember, all the questions you have, please use the chat. And I'm going to keep with this process for to create the butterfly, extrude, move, extrude, and move to define the distance. In this case, I'm going to rotate a little bit the edge and once again extrude to here, rotate. And in this case, as you can see, I will follow this direction, but then I want to start a new one from here, so I will make this edge to be exactly in here. It will be easier in the next steps. So let's move on, extrude again, rotate my edge, and Extrude once again, rotate, extrude, remember I press enter, I just change the gumball. Here I can scale down a little bit, I use the disc exactly as the move gumball to be 2D, two directions. And let's go back to the move gumball, extrude again. And this is the idea, really easy. Now, almost in the end, what I'm going to do to join these parts is to change the, the selection mode instead of edges. I'm going to change to point selection mode. As you can see, now I have all these points. And I'm going to select these two. In this case, this one and this one. And I'm going to use the collapse command. So this collapse command will join these two points in a single one. As you can see, I just select the points and collapse. So this is the idea, really easy. Let me change the, the display mode to smooth. And as you can see, easily I can use these points to adjust my shape exactly as I need. Really, really easy. I'm just adjusting all this, this edge to be exactly as the image I use as reference in the background. And as you can see, it's very easy to adjust my shape, to adjust everything exactly as I want to be. Okay, everything seems to be good. And I'm going to the next step. First, I just want to save my file. So right click and under the desktop, I will write the file name. So butterfly, save, and let's move on. In this case, I'm going to just adjust this point to start from here. And once again, go back to the box display mode and edges selection mode. So I just select the edge and from here extrude tool and with a with a move gumball I can move, I can rotate and let's move on with the same process in here. 
task move, rotate, scale, everything as we see before. So as I told you, I believe this is a, a very good exercise because the, the, the process, we will repeat this process several times, so it's very good for practicing. And I'm going to move on with the extrude, rotate, can adjust the position a little bit better. And once again, extrude. OK, rotate a little bit. And once again, extrude. And I'm following exactly the shape I want. It could be a, a end sketch, anything. We use an, an image as background just to be the reference and from here as you can see it's really easy okay move press enter to call the extrude tool I can use the gumball the scale gumball now to adjust the scale and let's go again scale a little bit again move and extrude. So this is the idea. Now I need to collapse the point, so let's do it once again point selection mode. I select the points I want to collapse and I just click on the collapse tool. The same in here, select the points and collapse. Okay, let's take a look under the smooth display, as you can see easily we can adjust the shape, everything, as we have seen before. It's exactly the same process. And easily I adjust my shape. Here I can adjust a little bit better. OK, seems fine. And now I'm going to move on. Once again, change to box and select the edge, extrude, and move to define the shape. OK, let me scale a little bit, move gumball, and extrude again. Okay, remember, press enter to, to repeat the last tool. Okay, change the gumball and extrude again. This stage is really, uh, really easy because the process is always the same. Okay. I need to rotate now, so this is the idea. Okay, and let's go again. Okay, let's move on. Extrude, extrude again, once again, I will rotate a little bit more, scale, and always the same process. As you can see, it's really easy, and now um I would say that uh, that I'm 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 looking looking to the chat to see if there is any question. 
I believe uh, we don't have it. Okay. Uh, I see uh, some questions, so I'm going to 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 uh, send to Xavi to answer this these questions. And uh, let's let's move on uh, with with the with the modeling process. Extrude again. And uh, let's finish this one once again. Extrude. Rotate. Extrude again, rotate, extrude, so almost finished this stage. Okay, I believe I click on extrude twice, so let me repeat, extrude. And now I'm going to repeat the process. So I'm going to change to point selection mode, select the points and collapse. And the same in here, point selection mode and collapse. Okay, so change the, 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 the display mode to, to smooth level. And once again, I'm going to adjust the shape. Okay, so this is the idea. Let's go to the perspective view. I have my my wing, my shape define it. And now I can um, use, I just going to, before I hide the image, because I just I will just use the image in this stage because I uh, just want to, to define the wing based on the on the, the wings based on the image then will be we, we I will apply a pave so it will be different so I'm going to define the body of the but in, in from from this this image I'm going to use the, a curve so uh, I have the smart curve tool and I'm going to activate the, the grid snap just to make sure I'm going to start in the middle. So I start from here. Now I can disable it and define this shape from so the head and then the body. As you can see, this curve I just define the points to define the curve. And finally I activate the grid snap just to make sure it's exactly in the middle. Okay, let's go to the perspective view. And in here, I'm going to unlock my object. So in this case, the image, I can change to any other layer. So I just create an one layer and change object layer and I can hide the layer in here easily, as you can see. And now I need to uh, define the thickness. So I, in this case, I don't have any thickness. So I select, I'm going to this, uh, select the entire objects and I select the entire uh, uh, object, as you can see. So back to the clay tab, I'm going to use the shell tool to define the thickness. So easily, I just define the thickness I want. In this case, I can type in the common line. Let's use, in this case, 1.6 millimeters. And as you can see, now I have my, my thickness defined. It. And from here, I'm going to, um, I'm going to define uh, the, the, the inside part. So I want to apply a pavé. Let's see how I'm going to create this part. First thing, I want I want to keep this this uh, area the, the the for the pavé section. So I'm going to select one face, and I want to select all these loop of faces. So as you can see in here, I have the select in V direction or U direction. Has uh, I don't know which one is the V. In this case, I click one 
if it's not this one, I click again and it will select the other direction. As you can see easily, I select the entire faces from inside and I'm going to use the Divide tool. So with the Divide tool, I divide each face in two. So the idea now is to select only the bottom faces. So once again, I select the, the, all the loop. And from here, I'm going first to delete them. And now, as you can see, uh, this is uh, orange because it's a naked edge. We can use the, directly the Select Naked Edges icon. So I select the naked edges, and I'm going to use the Extrude, extrude tool again, in this case to extrude these naked edges, but instead of move, I'm going to use the scale gumball. So with the scale gumball, if I use the top view, with the scale gumball, if I use the disk, I'm going to scale in two directions. So as before, I click extrude again, I create another division, and I scale again. So I'm extruding to the inside. So once again, extrude and scale. So it's really easy. As you can see in the perspective view, I have it still open. So to close, I just need to select the, the one of the edges and then all the loop. As you can see, uh, loop edge, it's in here, the, the, the icon. I select all the loop just from one side. And once again, with the collapse, I close it. So let's repeat the process now. In the bottom, I select the entire loop. So one edge, loop, and collapse. So easily, as you can see, I can close my, my, my surface, in, well, in this case, my, my, my solid. And let's move on to repeat the process in the other one. So I select one face, I select the loop, I divide and then I select again in order to remove the bottom ones. So all are naked edges and I select naked edges automatically. I select extrude and maybe in the top view it's easier. I scale again. Uh, once again, uh, now I'm going to use to repeat, extrude. This is just to create more divisions. It can be useful. And finally, enter again to create the extrude and one more division. And now we are almost ready to close the object. So I'm going to the perspective, select just the top, and create, select the loop, and collapse to close the object. The same in the bottom, I select one edge, select the loop, and once again with the collapse tool to close the shape. Okay, so finally the last one, faces selection mode, I select one face, I select the loop, I divide, and with the bottom, I select the loop again, in this case, the other direction, and I delete. OK, so now I just need to select uh, one edge. So let's go back to edges selection mode. But, well, in this case, I need to select all the naked edges, so all the edges, top view. And I'm going to repeat this process with the extrude tool and using the scale gumball. So in this case, I use the disks to make sure it's two direction scale. Press enter again to create another division. Scale down a little bit more, enter again, and scale down a little bit more. So this stage is almost finished. Once again, let's repeat the process to close the object. I select one, one, one edge, select the loop, and I collapse. And the same for the bottom. I select one edge, I select the loop, 
and I collapse all in a closed one, in a closed solid. Okay, so we are going fine. Uh, the object, let me change to uh, render display mode so we can see the results. It's really, really what I, what I want to be. So let's move on now. Change to shadow display mode. I'm going to the to move just a little bit the the position to here and now I'm going to create maybe I want to rotate just a little bit and I'm going to use this curve to create uh, the revolve the revolve using the revolve from Clayo tab I select the curve and then I just need to define the axis, in this, in this case the Y axis. I'm going to define, uh, well, the preview to see the smooth level. In this case, the divisions I'm going to use in, in, in this direction, uh, 10 divisions and in the along I can define more divisions to respect the curve. As you can see, how many more divisions I add, it will respect the curve. Of course, I can use less and adjust uh, easily with the um, with the with the gumball. Selecting the edges, the faces is really easy. I'm going to show you how. So from here, I can check the tool and it's created. I'm going also to hide this curve so. Just select the, the curve and hide the curve. And now uh, I'm going to adjust uh, before before the the before creating well uh, to to join both parts. I'm going to adjust the position. So faces uh, in this case I select the entire object in the front view. I can move up. I can rotate like this. I can adjust the position. And as you can see, I'm making sure that these, these faces are going to fit with that faces. And now, in this view, I'm going also to define um, maybe the position a little bit more in here okay it looks good uh, maybe a little bit more distance just a little bit like this looks good and now before creating the symmetry I'm going to uh, as you know I want to apply a pave so I'm going to define the, the pave area so to do it first I'm going just to define one detail in here as you can see the angle is smooth and I can create a sharp a sharp corner how to do it I just select the edge in this case all the loop and as you can see I have the crease tool so I can crease my my edge and if I change to to render it display mode as you can see now the edge is creased of course if I move up the smooth level we will see even more decrease so it's really really useful let's go again to the shadow display mode and repeat the process in this one crease edge and the same in this one I select the edge I select the loop and with the crease tool I define the sharp corner for this edge now as you know, I want to apply the pavé, I will copy just the area I want to apply the pavé. Just to be easier in the time to apply the pavé, I just select. Let me, with this icon with right click, I can hide the gumball. So I just select the faces from the center. And then to select all the parts, we can use the gumball 
the gum uh, in this case the icon grow selection so when I click once it grows and twice it grows again so is this part I want to apply the pave I'm going to extract so it's copy it will copy it will maintain the original object and will extract a new uh, in this case a, a new uh, faces more faces just in order to be easier to apply the pave once again, I'm going to repeat this process. In here, I select all the faces and grow selection and extract. So this is the idea, really, really easy. Just duplicate my objects, this, in this case, these faces, because then I will apply the pave only in that area. So I select all this, I grow the selection, uh, in this case this one, wrong icon, and then I extract. So it's really, really easy. And finally, uh, I can create the, the symmetry, so I select all the, the, the object, and under the transform tab, I can create the horizontal symmetry. So I have both sides, and now I just need to, uh, with the clay you uh, tab, I have the option to bridge, so to create, to, to join both parts. So let me use faces selection mode. I will select two faces from this side and two faces from this side. And now I'm going to use the bridge tool. As you can see, the bridge will connect both parts, as you can see, easily like this. So I just need to accept in here. We have a few parameters in the side panel, like add more divisions. In this case, we don't need. And uh, in this case, I'm going to repeat the process. I select the faces from one side and two faces from the other. And once again, uh, the bridge icon to create the bridge. Sometimes if the bridge direction it's not good, so like this example, it's very easy to fix. We have in the in the side panel the align option. So when we click on align, it will uh, give us the points in order uh, to define the direction. So starting here and the direction goes to here in one side and I'm going to do exactly the same in the other starting here and the directions goes to here as you can see now the bridge is correct so I have my object my butterfly let me change to render display mode so we can see what we have now and from here now uh, the idea uh, I can uh, turn off clay U. as you know clay U, clay U, it's 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 uh, it's a mesh object so we can uh, uh, remember we can convert to nerves but in this case i would say we don't need because we can apply directly the pave on any object so i'm going to apply directly the pave on the clay U object so i'm going to select the the, the area i want to apply the pave and then in this case, I have one mesh, which is the entire object, and the other mesh is the area I extract before, just to apply the pave. So from here, I'm going to the Gems tab, and with the pave automatic tool, I will uh, select the area I want to apply the pave, and now all the parameters from the pave. So Gem size, I'm going to use the biggest with 1.8, the smallest with 1.2. Preview, I can click on any point to start the pave. I start from the center and I define the direction. I click enter and as you can see, it's calculating the pave. Of course, I can pause any moment and add manually in order just to adjust the details exactly as I want. I can add gems with, let's use 1.6, uh, maybe smaller in here. So let, let me define 1.4 in here. In here I will define bigger. So in here 1.4 looks good. 
Then I will refresh. In here I can use a little bit bigger, 1.6, as well as in here maybe 1.8 Go, goes better. And finally, the smallest with 1.2, I can use maybe in here, there is no enough space. Yes, there is. Then I will adjust, refresh all the positions, so no problem. I just find the positions and I refresh. As you can see easily, I create the gems position. Of course, I could adjust all the parameters. And move, uh, as you know, in Rhino Gold 5, we have the, the magnet, so we can move, and the, the, the gems will, will follow the one we are moving if this the magnet option is, is enabled. Now, I'm going to uh, also activate the prongs, adjust the prongs parameters. In this case, I'm going to use prongs with, with uh, 0.6, and as you know, uh, the inside prongs we add uh, automatically. The outside prongs will depend from the shape, so we add manually. It's very easy. I just define the prongs position. I click where I want to apply the prong. Here, in here, in here. And everything looks very good. So to add the prongs, okay, a few more in this area where we don't have gems, we can adjust the prongs, then the position I can adjust in the end, no problem, and I add first the prongs between gems and then the other prongs, so one more in here, one other in here, other in here, of course, I could add one more. Okay, looks good. I can adjust uh, the prongs position, everything. Um, I believe it looks good. Maybe I can add a new one in here, but it looks looks very good. Okay. Now, I just uh, accept the tool and I create the, the first pave. So, from here, I, have, uh, I will follow the, the same process. I select the mesh. I want to apply the pave. And now, pave automatic. I select where I want, in this case, the already selected uh, mesh. And I define gem size. Well, in this case, I'm going to start with 1.8 until 1.2, click on Preview. I'm going to use the, the center uh, uh, to start the, the pavé. And I click on, on the Adjust the Direction. And I can uh, pause. I prefer to add the, the outside manually. So I just adjust the size. In this case, one in here. The others I will use bigger, so 1.8, here maybe 1.5, and in here maybe 1.6, 1.7, looks good. And once again I refresh, I add the Bronx, so I can adjust all the details. L 8 diameter and of course the outside prongs so I just need to add the outside prongs okay and now once again move on just to define the prongs position Very good. Okay, almost finish. Uh, maybe a few more prongs in here, one in here, and looks perfect. Okay, from here 
it's done. I add this to, to the document. And finally, the, the last, the last pavé area, then I will create the symmetry. So I just select one side, uh, the, the mesh, I want to apply the pavé. I select the pavé automatic where I want to apply the pavé. It will apply, in this case, the selected mesh. And then uh, gem size, I can start, with, I can keep using the same measures. And preview, I define the center of the pavé, I define the direction, and from here uh, it starts calculating the pavé. So uh, it's, it's calculating, let me pause, and I will use the, the manual uh, just to add a few more gems. Let me add a few more in here, in here, here, okay, maybe change the size, remember uh, to make all your questions, uh, let me add a few more gems, okay, small size, I'm going to use 1.2 in here, let's see if we have space enough. If not, I will add more prongs, so I believe it will be enough. Let's try to refresh to see the results. Okay, looks looks better. With the magnet, we can adjust the, the position also. And maybe we have space in here for another one. Another in here. And I believe it's enough. Refresh and add the prongs, so I just activate the prongs, adjust diameter, um, eight, everything, and the outside prongs, I will use, uh, the, I will define all the positions manually, so just the prongs you need to make the, the stone setting. Okay, looks good. Okay, in here the same. Remember in the end you can adjust all the prongs position. Okay, in this area we need a little bit more prongs. One in here other in here, other in here. Okay, looks good. And now between gems and uh, around the gems as well. Okay, I believe it's fine, of course we could adjust everything as we need. Okay. Very good, Pedro, very good. Uh, let me remind you, all of you, that uh, you can ask any question that um, uh, we will be answering. So just write on the chat and, and we will, and we will be helping you with all your questions. Um, I think right now the model is almost ready, uh, but uh, let's make the photorealistic image, let's apply the symmetry, let's make the cutters. There's so much to do, but uh, I believe in, in 10, 15 more minutes uh, we will be done. I'm sorry, uh, we expect to have uh, 45 minutes, but it always takes longer. I apologize for that, but uh, we will keep modeling. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yes, we are moving on. Uh, just it will be it will be easy this part. I believe the hard work is already done. The idea to do this model with clay U and not with with uh, with normal curves and extrude. It's just I want exactly this smooth shape. I don't want. I could use extrude and fill it, but it's not exactly the same. In clay U, I have. Uh, I have more freedom, so um, 
this was the reason I, I preferred to use uh, to use Clayu for this model. Let me apply a material. As you can see now, I have the gems and the, the the prongs. I need to create the symmetry. Let me just select the areas I use it for the pavé, and I'm going to change the layer to the here hidden layer. I don't need them, so change object layer, and uh, I'm going to select. Uh, all the gems, so middle mouth button, select all the gems and with the jewelry tab I create the cutters automatically, so as you can see it's generating all the cutters and uh, the idea, well I can adjust all the cutters parameters of course, in this case uh, the important is just to cross, I want to create the holes under the gem, so I create the cutters and now uh, I'm going to uh, create the, the symmetry, so it's, it's really easy, I select the gems, the prongs, the cutters, everything I need, and I will uh, use under the transform tab the horizontal symmetry tool, so it will uh, generate all these, all these copies, remember it's several, several gems, several prongs, several cutters, so now remember you have lots of objects in, in the document, uh, and now the idea is just, uh, of course, uh, uh, to make Boolean operations, we need, we need uh, under the modeling tab, the Boolean operations, we need NURBS objects, but in this case, uh, the cutters are NURBS objects, but the, the butterfly is ClayU. Of course, easily I could change from ClayU to NURBS, but in in this case, just to remove the cutters, I can use the Boolean operation under the Manufacturing tab. As you can see, we also have the Boolean option. So, in this case, the idea is to use the Clayu object directly to make the Boolean without uh, change to NURB. So, what I'm going to do is to use the, to, to use the Boolean uh, difference tool. First object, the, the butterfly and second object, I'm going to select all the cutters, so um, the idea is to make the, the boolean operation to remove the cutters um, directly with, with the boolean operations under the, the manufacturing tab, so uh, it's calculating the boolean, remember it's, it's lots of, of cutters, lots of gems, so it can take a little bit to calculating all these all these operations, so uh, this is uh, a boolean uh, alternative options to make boolean operations with, with the ClayU objects, remember uh, if you want to edit your ClayU object, uh, I recommend you make a copy, you can uh, uh, save in a new layer, you can, you can hide, you can uh, just to be able, if you need to change anything, you if you save your 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 clay original file, you will be able to edit any moment. So it can be useful. Let's see the results. As you can see, I create easily the cutters. So let me select all the gems. I can hide the gems, and this is the idea. So as you can see, I create the pavé easily make the boolean, I just now have the gems, the prongs, I can also, uh, uh, in this case I'm going to use uh, a finding, so under the jewelry tab I have the findings tool, so I will select, uh, for instance, in this case I'm, I'm using the bail number one, and uh, I just need to adjust the the position, okay? I'm going to move the gumball, also the scale, uh, I don't need so big, so with the scale remember to press shift to scale in, in all directions, and now I move to the correct position, the position I want to, to use, and here we have the, the butterfly. Uh, I hope you like, you like the process, it's really different. Uh, uh, at least to show uh, alternative ways to, 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 to create your models, this is the idea from, from, from an image, just use the image as, as reference to create my model, 
And uh, I also want to create a render from this image. So the idea now, I will uh, apply, well, first under the render tab, I'm going to, to open uh, Arion, well, in this case, Render Studio for Arion. As you can see, automatically, the, the, the background is, is changed. It means that the, the, the environment from, from the render, it's already applied. And now I select, uh, for instance, this group of gems. And with this group of gems, I'm going to apply uh, a material. Uh, let me use, uh, for instance, the almondreed. Okay, the next one, I'm going to use this group, I'm going to use Aquamarine, and this one, uh, let's use the Amethyst. Okay, uh, the gems were applied, the materials, and now uh, I select the, the rest of the object, so I just select the gems and invert selection, so everything is selected except the gems. I'm going to the metal polish and I'm going to use yellow gold. Okay, uh, I can also add ground. As you can see, I click on the icon, I add ground. I have uh, a few options. Let's uh, use white ground. And uh, now under the render tab, I just define the resolution, any resolution. And I can start uh, render uh, my model. So any moment after the resolution, of course, I can define the number of passes, to define the render by time. Uh, and now uh, Arion is rendering. So as you can see, it's improving the image in the beginning with the with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the image. You can see uh, the noise. Uh, but uh, Arion, uh, it's, it's uh, improving the image always. So as you can see in the bottom, the number of passes, Arion is calculating the render. And here we go to see the, the rendering results. So of course, we can adjust several parameters in the render. We, can, we, we have several adjusts we can do. Let's just generate the render and uh, as you can see it's 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 can take a little bit but I would say I would say not too long well two minutes maximum the render is finished um, I see some questions if it is possible to, to delete a, a prong with the wrong position. Of course it is. Uh, we just need to select the, the, the prongs and with the middle, middle mouth button, it will show us the option to edit. So uh, when we edit uh, the, the prongs, the prongs, we are able to, to change the position, to change the size, to change the profile. There are many, many options to adjust to adjust the, the, the prongs. It's really, really easy. Okay, the render the render is is finishing. Uh, um, okay. Well, I would say that that the the render it's it's almost good. Uh, of course, it it could it could render a little bit more and and even better. Uh, I define in this in this render uh, 500 steps, uh, not steps. Uh, well, uh, at this at this point, it's is 380. Uh, I would say 500 minimum. Of course, if I use 600, 800, 1000 would be even better, but it, it's good enough to see the, the results. So I would say that from this model, this is the idea. Uh, I believe it's, let me let me know all the questions you have. I'm 
checking some if I see questions from the chat. Actually, I'm I'm don't see because I'm using the the Rhino Gold. I don't have too much chance to to be here looking through the chat, but but uh, uh, Shabby will will answer you. So uh, after after finish the render, uh, Render Studio will open the image editor. So the image editor it's really easy. You can adjust some contrast, some some brightness, some. You can add your own logo. You can add uh, uh, directly to Facebook. Uh, there are a few options uh, just to, to adjust a few details on the image. And of course, uh, save the image. Uh, save the image to finish to finish uh, the, the, the render. And this is this is the idea. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you. Uh, nice render. I'm sure um, in other webinars we can we can check also how to create animations. But today, as I said before, we are running out of time. So let me just go back one one second to the PowerPoint presentation. Just to show you other models like like you, users that are using RhinoGol. But mainly what I would like to show you is next, the next step. As you can see in this, in this slide, our next webinar will be next Tuesday. We are going to model this uh, Halo ring. It's a very American one. I, I think it's, it's pretty interesting. It's, uh, I would say it's kind of level two, level three model. The idea is to model it again in 45 minutes. We know that it will take one hour, but uh, <laughs> we like to say that it's going to be 45 minutes. Uh, it's very easy. You only need to go to uh, rhinoworld.com slash webinars, and in there you can register for free, no cost at all. And another hour of Rhinoworld learning. It's uh, remember this date, uh, February 24th, next Tuesday, the same time as today. And um, for those ones who have no Rhino Gold yet, they can download the final version at uh, tmtotions.com or rhinogold.com, doesn't matter. You can always uh, visit our forum, myrhinogold.com, to find learning resources like videos, PDF, uh, podcasts, the training guide, everything is in there. So do not hesitate to take all these resources and learn by yourself. And you will see that very, very soon you will be modeling fluently in RhinoGol. The slide that you don't like, but I do, this is the RhinoGol 5 prices, just 30 seconds. Uh, if you are a new user and you like what you have seen, and you see that you are able to model in RhinoGol, you have this price, 29.90. US dollars or euros, depending on your area. If you are a Rhino user, we have a, a big community of just well, Rhino 5 users. You can purchase Rhino Gold for just 19.95. And of course, if you are a Rhino Gold 4 user or uh, even older versions, uh, you can just upgrade to Rhino Gold 5 for 8.95. And how to purchase? That's so easy. Just uh, go to our website, slash buy and in there you can find our dealers. You just select the country and then you will find your nearest reseller that you can contact and um, ask for Rhino Goal, the software, the training, consultancy, technical support, or if there is none, you can always contact us directly. We're happy to hear you. And as I as we said, we're going to spend the last five minutes, ten minutes answering all your questions. I apologize for today. I couldn't be able, I was not able to answer in time because I had uh, some sort of problem with my computer. But uh, we will dedicate the next five, ten minutes to answer all your questions. Uh, of course, uh, Pedro and myself, we, we thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Um, invite you to the next ones. By the way, for those who will be in the Inorgente show 
from Friday to Monday, we will be there as well. So if you if you are coming to that show, just drop by our booth and we can have a nice chat. Once again, thank you very much all. Uh, remember that we will dedicate the five the next five ten minutes to answer your questions. Uh, appreciate and see you next time. Thank you, Pedro. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.